Okay, rotations part three. We left off uh, with number seven. Number seven, we could refer back to up here. Uh, was saying the ellipse x squared plus 2y squared equals 1 is rotated about the origin 90 degrees. Find the equation of the new curve. So, uh, very important uh, topic here, very similar to our last problem. Thankfully, we can do this a little bit more quickly. Uh, here's our ellipse. We've got x squared plus 2y squared equals 1. Even if you didn't know it was an ellipse, it's obviously some kind of a graph. Lots and lots of ordered pairs on that. But we're going to rotate every point on this curve 90 degrees about the origin. As soon as we are writing that, it's going to be understood that it's 90 degrees counterclockwise. So let's just write out uh, the very common form of the rotation. We have our image, what we end up with, uh, but we're going to have cosine of 90 degrees, opposite sine of 90 degrees, uh, down here's the sine of 90 degrees, and then here we have the cosine of 90 degrees. Uh, that's our transformation matrix, and here's our pre-image, x, y a 2 by 1 matrix. Now I hope we know that the cosine of 90 is 0, sine of 90 is 1, but this would become a negative 1, sine of 90 is a 1, cosine of 90 is 0. Very often uh, kids will wonder, well on the last problem you multiplied on the left uh, by the inverse matrix of your transformational matrix. Could we do that again? And the answer is, indeed we could, we certainly could. But I do want to say this, it's not like this is uh, just a rote process that we always can go through. If you see zeros especially, look, let's review our matrix multiplication. Row by column. Zero times x is just zero. Negative one times y, we get negative y. Uh, down below, row by column, 1 times x is x, plus 0 times y, well 0 times anything is 0 itself. Uh, look at that, we had our 2 by 2 matrix, here's our 2 by 1, of course we have inner dimensions matching, we get a 2 by 1 matrix. Should have mentioned that at first, but hopefully, hopefully it's pretty obvious. Uh, now look right here, we can say that the opposite of y is equal to x prime, well you know what we're really saying is y equals the opposite of x prime solving. Similarly, down here I could say x is equal to y prime. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to take these x and y values and just immediately substitute them in. We'd get y prime squared plus 2 times x prime squared equals 1. and Or opposite, I am so sorry. Uh, y was equal to the opposite of x prime. But we know that uh, a negative, when you square it, is going to become a positive. As is very much the common trend, uh, we can drop the primes. Uh, the primes are helpful, telling us, look, this is uh, where we end up. This would be the new ordered pair, the new x, y value that we would arrive at after a 90 degrees rotation. Uh, but in the end, we can see this right here is the equation of our transformed ellipse. Uh, very quickly, let's do one more and then we'll be done with rotations. Let's take a look at number eight uh, in your packet uh, just as well. And again, we're on page uh, 141. Just wanted to continue to bring that up. Page 141, we have the line y equals zero is rotated uh, through theta degrees about the origin. Wow! No specific uh, angle measure given. Just a very general theta degrees. Uh, find the equation of the new curve. Well, my goodness, this can get to be a, a, a little bit confusing at first, to be honest. I think sometimes kids can look at this and think, well, uh, we haven't been told how many degrees we're rotating. How on earth can we ever begin to arrive at this? 
course, common sense can be used. Kids can say, well, y equals 0, that's the x-axis. And if we rotate that theta degrees, we would wind up with a line that looks like so. But my goodness, how on earth could we write an equation that would represent uh, what we have, especially when it's a general theta degree rotation? Well, there are a couple of ways, but I'd like to review how to work with the inverse of the matrix again. I think that is a very important skill. Honestly, it's one of the most important skills we're going to have, specifically because this is generalized. It's these generalized problems that, you know, can really be confusing for kids the first few times they see them. Uh, and take a look at this. We know we have a transformation matrix. Let's review what we wrote the other day, two videos ago. We said, look, if you have a matrix, you could call it X prime. And if you have a transformation matrix A, and then you have your pre-image pre matrix, which we'd call X, we said you could multiply by the inverse of matrix A on the left. With matrix multiplication, we never just say we're multiplying with that matrix. We have to give some specifics saying we're multiplying on the left or on the right. Now, of course, we can group and say, well, A inverse times A is the identity matrix, and the identity matrix times anything is the matrix itself. So, wow, take a look at this. We have uh, A inverse times X prime. Here's a great way to work this out. The big, big, big question is how on earth do we get this inverse? Could our TI-89 perhaps help us? Amazingly, it can. Look, we're going to enter in a matrix, uh, and sometimes kids are like, well, wait a minute, what about theta? You know, should we somehow try to find a theta button, perhaps? And you know, you can find theta. You know, the catalog has a lot of uh, things. You can see right above the caret in green, we have theta right here. So if you really wanted to use that, you could. And, and we could definitely do that. Uh, let me real quickly, though, just begin to type out what we have. We have uh, the cosine, second cosine. Uh, we could use theta. I'm going to say green diamond caret. And I want to be clear about something, too. Uh, you could have used alpha A, alpha B, whatever you'd like. Uh, that would suffice, too. So we've got cosine of theta. Then I'm going to type in the opposite of the sine. And again, we'll hit green diamond caret to get our theta. Uh, hit your semicolon, second nine for that. And then we know that we're going to have just the sine of theta. So green diamond here. Honestly, this is maybe just the most time-consuming part of the whole process. Uh, second cosine. Again, green diamond theta. And we're pretty much there. I'm going to close my brackets. You might remember I'm really looking for the inverse. So hit caret negative 1 and hit enter and amazingly amazingly look at what has just happened it writes it in what's called pretty print it writes it as a matrix and that negative one up there is saying hey you want me to find the inverse of that do you know what that inverse is cosine theta sine theta up on top opposite sine theta cosine theta down below wow is that helpful what are we really seeing well, I'm going to multiply on the left by this. Now, don't forget this other matrix has not gone away. We've got our cosine of theta, opposite sine theta. Here's sine theta, cosine of theta. Of course, if you wanted to multiply through these two matrices by hand, you certainly may. Uh, the two of them will multiply out to the identity matrix. I think that uh, for the sake of time, it's uh, probably better that I leave that to you to check it if you'd like. You could also check it via the calculator if you'd like. 
Okay, so then we have our x prime, y prime. Now look at this. This is really just really cool. Like I said, the right-hand side, so important. Anytime you multiply a matrix and it's inverse, the equivalent is to say it's multiplying to like the number one. Now, it, it, the identity matrix, of course, is a matrix with ones going on that left diagonal, going from the top left corner to the bottom right. But anytime you multiply an identity matrix uh, to uh, an equivalent matrix that could be multiplied, you'll get that matrix itself. It's as if it's just disappearing, in other words. Uh, on this left-hand side, tell you what, I'm going to multiply by hand. I'm going to say, uh, let's see, we'll get x prime cosine of theta plus sine, I'm sorry, y prime sine of theta. Where am I getting that? Well, very simply, top row multiplied here. Cosine matches to x prime sine uh, to y prime. Similarly, I can have opposite x prime sine of theta uh, and then plus y prime cosine of theta. Now, guys, if I'm going to tell you that you're working with y equals zero, Thank goodness the only substitution you have to make is that y is equal to the opposite of x prime sine of theta plus y prime cosine of theta. So let's do that. We're almost there. Making that substitution, my goodness. How about we solve for y prime? And by the way, kids ask all the time, can we drop the primes now? Indeed, you could. You could do that right now if you would like. Uh, here's our new equation. Our new equation, we don't have to leave in, in that form uh, with the primes. My goodness, here's x sine of theta. We can divide by cosine of theta. And here we go. Y is equal to the tangent of theta, sine over cosine, times x. Uh, and we talk so much how a tangent is used in calculus. Many uh, of our students are studying calculus. Uh, tangent, uh, if we were to go back to this picture way up here, the tangent would always be opposite uh, over adjacent. But my goodness, if you think about that, that's your rise over run and a wonderful connection to how this line is going to have now a slope that is non-zero. And that slope is going to be the tangent of theta. So that's wrapping everything up for our uh, rotations. We're going to be moving on to reflections and a few other topics. But the same general ideas are going to hold true. We're going to have a transformation matrix. We can certainly use it, but we can also multiply by an inverse to get some help. Keep up your work. Come see me if you need help.